The gentleman reserves. The gentleman from Missouri is recognized. Thank you, Speaker. This time I'd yield five minutes to the gentleman from Louisiana, uh, the ranking member of the Aviation Subcommittee, uh, Mr. Graves. The gentleman from Louisiana is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, today we spend an average of $100 billion a year responding to disasters, a hundred billion. This is a number that we can't afford to continue responding, continue reacting to disasters. The National Institutes of Building Standards have done all sorts of analysis looking at the efficacy of making investments on the front end, on the front end. So, Mr. Speaker, we're not in a situation where, as in the chairman's case, we're having to go into Oregon or Washington or California or other states out west and pick up the pieces of these communities destroyed by forest fires. We don't have to go into these communities that have been impacted by severe winter storms, communities living along rivers that have been inundated by floods, or communities on the southern coast, the Gulf Coast or the East Coast, that have been pummeled by hurricanes, such as our home state of Louisiana, with just in recent years, hurricanes Laura, Delta, Zeta, Ida, some of the most powerful hurricanes to ever make landfall in the United States. The National Institute of Building Standards have found that for every $1 you invest in, in, in natural mitigation solutions, you get up to $13 in savings. By adopting more resilient building standards, building codes, you get up to $11 in savings. Let me say it again, Mr. Speaker, we can't afford to keep doing this, $100 billion a year. As, the, as Ranking Member Graves noted a few minutes ago, Back in 2018, we worked on a bipartisan basis to, to actually enact the, the, the BRIC program, to, to really take the PDM, the Predisaster Mitigation Program, and put it on steroids. And this, based on the incredible popularity of the program, the progress that's been made, this legislation helps to advance it even further by increasing the funds that are available, most importantly, by eating into that $100 billion we're spending in taxpayer funds every year responding to disasters, reducing that cost, and most importantly, Mr. Speaker, the most important thing is the actual impact on the ground. Those communities out west that are dealing with forest fires, helping to stop, prevent, contain those forest fires. Those communities that are, that are experiencing devastation from winter storms, helping to protect and make them more resilient. Communities that are getting repetitive floods, making sure those communities can withstand those floods, and those communities that we represent in South Louisiana that have had hurricane after hurricane that are truly challenging the existence, the livelihood of those communities, helping to make sure they can withstand, they can withstand these storms, and we can continue to live life and enjoy life in coastal communities like South Louisiana. Lastly, Mr. Speaker, I want to thank uh, uh, Chairwoman Titus and Chairman DeFazio, Ranking Member Graves and Ranking Member Webster, we, we were able to include two amendments in here. Number one, we worked with Congressman Dunn on the very important. Uh, right now, uh, FEMA takes so long to reimburse communities in the aftermath of a disaster. In many cases, our parishes, our counties and states have to take out loans. And so there's an amendment added to this bill that mandates that FEMA pay the interest cost of the loan. If they're going to take forever to reimburse, they can at least cover the loan cost, the interest cost in the loan. And, um, and, and the second one is a, a government efficiency provision. Right now, the Corps of Engineers has the most arduous process in the federal government for developing projects, including cost-to-benefit ratios, environmental analysis, and technical feasibility. Yet under current law, Corps of Engineer projects are prohibited from receiving funds under the BRIC program or PDM. This fixes it. If that's the best solution, if it's the greatest cost savings, if it's the best efficiency of the dollar, my goodness, we shouldn't be stopping it. We should be incentivizing it. So I want to thank all the folks that work together on this legislation. I look forward to enactment and uh, urge adoption and yield back.